Welcome. Today we're talking about innovation with Kadir Azbairam and Klaus Issenbecker, senior partners at software manufacturer Inspy. Now, with core competencies in enterprise architecture and transformation management, Inspy was named a top 100 innovator in Germany recently. So let's find out why. Welcome to you both. Firstly, Thank you. what makes a top 100 innovator in Germany? So that's a secret. We can't tell you. <laughs> no. I think there are multiple aspects of being a top innovator in Germany. Uh, we survived the question of 160 questions. I think that's not what you're interested in. I think from our perspective, what makes the key difference, and because we're here to share a couple of best practices today, is the first thing is really the overall setup. It is really the vision you have as you know entrepreneurs and looking forward, you know, where you want to go. So the visionary approach you are taking. So that, is, I think, is a very key thing. And you need to set up an environment where the team, which is very important and essential to be innovative as well, to enforce creativity. Of course, it's a little bit tricky when you have a purely home office environment that completely virtual is set up. But I think those are the first two important things you need to do. The third thing is, is again, in alignment with the vision and the goal you want to do, because as a technology manufacturer, you want to be ahead of the curve. So that means everything you do needs to be better and you need to have that competitive advantage. Otherwise, you know, what's the point? But just having an idea and being, you know, innovative. And for us, in, in, innovation is coming basically from inspiration, which is coming then from a spiritual perspective, right? It's the spirit, the inspiration, and then the innovation. The last important thing we see is the transformation which means basically the execution of that idea, you know, bring it on the road, make it tangible and bring it on the market, which then brings in the monetary aspect of it. So innovation doesn't mean just to have that idea, you know, uh, an ac academical approach. It is really have the idea, have the team behind that, execute it, and then you get some kind of value of that. And not yourself as a company, not just your employees. It should be the value of the customer. Mm. Sounds very grandiose, spiritual, no less. Can you and do you drive innovation daily as a team? You and can. so how? Yeah, you can. So, well, um, I think the first thing you need to do if you really want to work innovative, you have to always be creative. I wouldn't say it's like a playground, but it's kind of similar. So that means you often challenge what you have. You bring input in from you know, internal people, you use the clients, you use prospects, and you are not egocentric. So you have to remember that the journey is the value itself. It's about finding the new ways, changing the new ways. In the end, it doesn't really matter who came up with the idea. Right? As long as someone is not saying, oh, that's my idea, that's awesome, forget all the others, you know, then you're not innovative, then it's an ego game. Here, you play it up against each other. We always do that. We have what we call the devil's advocate. So if I have a good idea, I know Carly will always take the extreme opposite, and then we play with that, and we see where do we land. We do the same when we work with our clients. We do the same with the internal uh, IP development team, basically everyone. And that's about, you know, you play with that to really create the best ideas. That's the cool thing. That's the fun part. In the end, I think that's why we're here. That's why we are doing what we're doing, mm. because we enjoy that a lot. Money, yeah, of course, it's important, but money is an enabler to do the things you do, right? So does that make sense? So that's yeah. kind of the innovative spirit of why we do it is because we're both driven in the sense of let's create something that's better. We can do that. Of course we can. Right? But we need to play with it because no one has that full competency. So if we're just playing around with each other, get the inputs and see where it lands. Mm. So having teamwork, great communication, a little bit of fun thrown in as well. So what other advice would you give to anyone who's starting a tech company? The, the likely challenges, the pitfalls and how you can overcome them? Listen to your customers. I think your idea may be fantastic, but as long as you are not solving a real problem of your customers, forget it, you will not be successful. And this is what we take as well as part of our innovation. And being a top innovator was as well one of those questions, what are you doing with your customers in terms of open innovation and your partners? And that is really essential for yeah. us. So for instance, to give you a tangible example is we have a formalized quarterly sessions with our customers. We call them inspirator. 
Mm -hmm. Right, so it, it's a good fit as well to inspire. So it's inspirator sessions where we go in and show our roadmap, our ideas, and as well the ideas from our customers we have captured the last quarter uh, within the last quarter, and then go in and do a reassessment, bringing as well new ideas, show the mockups, the prototypes we have done with our customers, get the feedback, and what makes a key difference for us as well is to ask the customers and say. Please tell us what is the most urgent thing for you. What are the problems you are facing today? What are the urgent things we should, uh, you know, solve as well from a product perspective, and help us to prioritize. Because for us, it doesn't matter if we build in, you know, feature A in in a month or in a year. So, but for the customer, it will make the difference. And then we have selected customers where we go much, much deeper. Mm -hmm. Lexmark is a good example. What they do, they have created the digital twin of their enterprise together with our applications. And as part of that engagement, they have leveraged then the, the IP they have generated and our products to the next level, creating a new set of solutions which they can now provide to their customers. So, and this is exactly what we're looking for. And I think this is really innovation. What they're doing is just cutting edge. It's completely next level. And we're just happy to be part of that. So in that case, we are enabling customers to create new solutions, new um, uh, new proposals, you know, to their customers on the market, which makes, uh, makes us very, very proud. I just want to ask you, once you've got your company up and running, how do you then step it up to the next level? Well, it's, it's about being very clear about what you want to do, right? I think that's the first advice I would say to anyone who says, I want to create my first company. It's the same when someone comes and says, we want to do enterprise architecture. And we're always the same things we do, which ask the question, okay, awesome, why? Mm -hmm. What is it you want to do, right? Um, if you're saying, well, I just want to create a new company to earn a lot of money, don't do that. Completely nonsense. So what we learned is you've got, to be, you've got to be an expert in the area of the business you want to go in. Know something about it. If you don't know something about it, but know you want to go into whatever that is, then get a job somewhere. Learn it. Get the skill set. And then based on that, then you can decide to go into the business. And also be very clear, don't, don't hunt squirrels. right? So the point is, don't go in and create a business for the idea alone. The idea is there, but when you make the commitment, that that's what you pursue. Keep the agility, keep the innovation, but the target is still there. That's what I would always say. So be very clear about what you want to do, get some skill set in that area, and, and chase it. All right? Then you can become successful. Whether you scale it or not in the end, but it's a little bit back to the spiritual thing, what you want to do. For me, scaling was not the most important thing. It just happened because you know, good things draws good things. You're doing something, you're enjoying it. People sense that. And then, you know, who, who and people want to be part of that. And then more business comes. So, and then the biggest challenge come is, which is, how do we maintain the values we built the company on, even if we're scaling and becoming a lot more people? It's a very interesting mm -hmm. question, right? So, of course, it is about putting some ground values in, how we treat each other in the company, how we treat our customers, but vice versa, how we are expecting to be treated by clients. I would be honest and say we had prospects where we told them we're not a good fit simply because they didn't fulfill those value sets. And, and some of them even get upset. I said, look, I'm sorry, but your behavior pattern doesn't fit with how we want to be treated, how our employees want to be treated, and how we want to treat others. It's rare, though, but it mm -hmm. does happen. And that's about being true to the values that you instill in yourself, in your partners, in your colleagues, and in the company as a whole. That's quite hard, though, even as a, an individual to, a, to all the way up to a business to, to stay true, especially when you're starting out, to have that confidence to go, this doesn't fit. Well, it's, it's, it's really challenging. But I think, you know, what we have is a framework based on the ar enterprise architecture knowledge we have. And that is really key. Again, we defined our vision, the mission, the goals, the strategies and our business capabilities. So, you know, traditional enterprises, bigger than 10,000 employees, they have a certain complexity. They do enterprise architecture. Smaller companies typically don't do that. They have maybe a spreadsheet of their activities, what they want to focus on, mm -hmm. but we are living and breathing basically daily our model. And the trick here, and that's basically the part of the secret sauce and uh, you know we, we want to share here, is exactly to apply those principles, th this framework on your business, so you can always see what's my strategy. And when you're talking about our goals and strategies, of course we define it by the beginning of the year, but it's an agile process behind that because there are so many 
drivers, the market is changing, suddenly you have a pandemic, you know, dependency, something is going on. So you need to constantly change and adapt and adjust as you're going forward. And, you know, steering the company, including the employees you have, that all needs to be in harmony. So, you know, the traditional triage of the people, process and technology, I would add just the information and the data as part of that. So we have really those four legs of the table. So that's always you need to have an eye on and measure those KPIs and push that forward. But going through those different stages when you create a company, you need to be aware of, you will start like a baby and then you will, you will you know, build up that baby, become a kid and then a teenager and then continue that growing process. In that journey, and it is a journey, innovation is a journey as well, you will never end. So it doesn't mean you create a company in two years, you are done. Mm. That's not true. It's a journey you will continue. On the journey, you have to see who is part of that journey. You have to have, you know, a partner in place which you can really rely. If you want to do shared business, if you don't find the right partner who is not a subject matter es expert and you can trust, and you can, you know, measure, you know, the success and your partnership relation with money and do a travel and see, you know, how that is working up. If you're aligned, that's fantastic. If you're hiring people in, the obvious is you want to have people you can trust. You will, you know, get somebody from the family or you will get friends, you know, for ages. Trust me. Don't do that. That doesn't work. Don't do that. Suddenly they will leave you Speaking behind. Speaking experience. Don't do that. That's completely experience. It may work out, but that means, you know, being a friend and running a professional business, there are two different things. If you can bring them together like we do with Klaus, you know, we are like an old couple. Uh, I think we love it. We love spending time together, discussing those, having those discussions where everyone is coming from a different angle and we're creating something completely new, which none of us have thought about that. So this is strongness. This is, this is exactly the spirit we are looking for. So if you create a new startup, a business, know your stuff, know your business, be a subject matter expert, then surround yourself with experts who can complement you. Mm. And you know, set up a creative environment where the team can contribute. So we are very fortunate. We have fantastic team behind us, you know, who, who is supporting us coming with new ideas. But it depends as well on the leadership level and the style we do. We have a flat hierarchy. You know, we bring the team to Barbados, to the Dom Rep, doing crazy stuff. But we enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm. It's great, you know, to eat and having lunch in front of the house of Rihanna with the team on the boat. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just fantastic. We enjoy that. Uh, it, it's not just maximizing the money. It is something to give back to the, to, the, to the team, you know, to the community. She could have come out and said hi. But that's a different question. She wasn't question. there, unfortunately. She wasn't there. Yeah, there we have if it. She, if she had been there, she, yeah. could, she could have come out. I mean, you talk a lot about the process, and I'm glad you mentioned about innovation being a, a process, a journey, because that's exactly what it is, isn't it? It's, it doesn't end. There's no end point to it. So then where do you see yourselves in four or five years time as a company? I think we're still, we're still pursuing according to the original values, which means we will still go ahead and innovate. You will see new things coming out of Inspire that's not on the market today. You will see new crazy ideas, probably because of that, will probably have grown. I think that's just a natural thing of that. How else we will come? It's a good question. I think it's one of the things as well you've got to realize when you build a business is you don't have the end result, you know, at the end. You have a vision, but how you actually end up as the business, you can't predict that. And you need to make that acceptable in your head and your business partner's head because it's the journey itself that brings you there. Don't stick too much about some pre-idea that we will end up here with 100 employees and we will drive Porsches and I'll do all of this crazy nonsense, right? Uh, in the end, it's about have an idea, but always be agile and use the innovation to, to bring you where the, where the journey takes you. Where will we be? I don't know. What it looks like at the moment is we will grow. We will have new cool things coming out because a lot of things are going on in IP development. We have an awesome team. Probably there will be even more. Um, I don't know, but I can guarantee you we will be in a, in a happy place because we pursue what we truly spiritually and personality-wise believe in. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Klaus and Kadir. Thank Pleasure. you.